Hey, what up, everybody? Uh, this is Steve Breach coming to you after WWE's Monday Night Raw, which aired on the USA Network, as always. If you flipped over to the WWE Network, which is on my Apple TV or on your internet, or however you watch it, some people might watch it on their phones or however you can get a hold of it, WWE ran a new series that they were starting entitled WWE Rivalries. The first episode was on Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Vince McMahon. This was honestly a show that I was very, very looking forward to. I, I love uh, the DVD set that came out a few years ago, which was Greatest Rivalries, Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. And that's what I was looking for from this series. And this is nothing like this series. With the uh, Bret Hart uh, versus Shawn Michaels, uh, it was basically a sit-down interview uh, that was hosted by Jim Ross, and they went over the history of these guys competing against each other, where Brett and Sean came up as the Rockers versus the Hart Foundation, then they battled over the Intercontinental Championship, and then later would battle over the WWE Championship, which led to the screw job, uh, which led to them... Um, basically parting ways before they came back uh, together in 2010 when Brett came back to the WWF uh, in order to set up WrestleMania 26 and of course the the first episode of the uh, WWE versus TNA Monday Night Wars is where you got to see the handshake of Brett actually coming back and shaking Shawn Michaels' hand and just basically telling all the stories that went along with that. This honestly was a sit-down clip show uh, basically of... Uh, Interviews or they've used from different shows, talking heads of, of different uh, you know wrestling personalities from past and present WWE superstars, reliving watching this stuff from back in the day, or um, things that are just basically cut off of other DVDs. This was a very good show. This was a very good episode. The only problem is is that they aired Monday Night War of uh, a 20-part uh, documentary series uh, on WWE versus WCW on Stone Cold Steve Austin two weeks ago. So a lot of this stuff that wasn't really highlighted on just the Monday Night Raw stuff, they sort of included some of the pay-per-view rivalries uh, that went along during this feud. Um, honestly, it just was repetitive bullshit and when it comes down to it this was about Stone Cold Steve Austin I listen to Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast twice a week I've been a religious uh, listener for over a year now I'm pretty sure I haven't missed an episode I think I'm pretty sure that I listened to every single one and um, there's not many of those batches that I can pick out that I didn't like the one thing that I can say that you can knock Stone Cold Steve Austin is is when somebody brings something up on a phone call or whether he's on a um, like he's hosting a, a um, like a conversation between two guys, whenever he touches on a story that he's told in the past, whether if it's the 4th, 5th, or 20th time, he tells the story. The whole deal. I don't know if it's what he does where you know, he basically knows I have to fill an hour of content each week and you know, basically I know that if, if I tell the story I'm going to kill two minutes uh, and, and or maybe he just doesn't even really know that he's doing it over and over and over again. But these were stories basically that, that are on the... Um, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin documentary that came out a few years ago. Definitely stories are on that Monday Night War documentary. If if you're watching this video in order to see, like, am I going to go over and check this out, this one-hour show, skip this one. Watch whatever the next episode is. And if you watch a couple more and you like it, then come back to it. Because right now, if, if you're catching up on the Monday Night War documentary set, and you just watch the Austin one like I did two weeks ago, and you watch this one, you're more than likely not going to like it. I do like the setup of the show, uh, basically of... Um, basically reliving this over script pictures. They have a lot of talking heads. They show a little bit of footage, but honestly not enough for me uh, when it comes down to it. Um, but uh, basically, this picks up with them telling the story about how Vince McMahon came up, and he had Hulk Hogan, and he had Andre the Giant, and then basically, you know, that led to, you know, them leaving, and then he, he started going with Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, and of course, uh, they talked about Bret Hart leaving uh, WWE and heading over to WCW, and that gave a spot up um, for uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin to be moving towards the top. Basically, he was a guy that uh, basically earned everything he got in the wrestling business. He wasn't really handed anything. Stone Cold Steve Austin was a character that, you know, Steve Williams created on his own, knowing that, you know, he had the ringmaster gimmick and he wasn't going to get anywhere with that. And if he wanted to make money and he wanted to keep wrestling, he needed something to, to revolve and, and be able to move up the top of the card. The ringmaster wasn't going to be main eventing any WrestleManias. He was 
wasn't even going to be, be lucky enough to be working in WWE for a, a good little bit of time. Even once Stone Cold Steve Austin was able to shake Ted DiBiase and he was able to become Stone Cold Steve Austin, even at that, that point, he he was looked at as, as more of a jobber of the stars. Uh, Steve Austin, caught, uh, he always refers to himself as a, um, a ring, not a ring technician, but a... Um, um, Oh, I can't remember what the name is that, that, that um, um, just, just the guy that was able to get in the ring and have a good match with just basically anybody, uh, that he, that he could. He was just a hired hand, pretty much. Um, this, this gets picked up, basically. Um, they don't even talk about, uh, or really show the pile driver in the middle of the ring on, on SummerSlam, but it basically picks up with, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin showing up on Monday Night Raw and the Madison Square Garden, where basically he was gonna come down and he was gonna attack Owen Hart the night after, um, SummerSlam. He took the neck brace off and, and basically he was trying to keep himself fresh and keep himself on TV, even though he knew kayfabe wise he wasn't able to wrestle because his neck was broken and he needed to get that fucking th thing fixed i think that um he ended up just not getting surgery on it if i remember right and it just sort of healed itself and that would be uh something that would hurt him down the line um but he was still able to make monday night raw appearances where every week he would pick up the um the the, the microphone and, and that's that they were able to get him over or he might drive a zamboni uh down to the trucker you know he, he was doing things that were able to get him over without actually physically getting in a fight and physically getting into the ring um uh, things like that, you know, basically, when he came down there to attack Owen Hart, basically, the cops came out, uh, Vince McMahon came down and, and just basically told him that WWF cared uh, for his well-being and he didn't need to be in the ring, um, basically, Stone Cold Steve Austin took this as some sort of a threat, gave uh, Vince the first uh, Stone Cold Stunner right there in Madison Square Garden, of course, Vince was flopping around like a fish, and, uh, Took one of the worst stunners in the history of the, uh, the of the stunner of all time. Uh, from there, they don't show you; they just sort of tell you where they where they get to. Was that Stone Cold Steve Austin wins the Royal Rumble? That makes him the number one contender. Where he would go on and he would face. Um, uh, Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 14. Of course, a big part of that was Mike Tyson joining the WWE. Um, with, with Mike Tyson being there as sort of the big, um, you know, they, they had Mike Tyson watch the Royal Rumble in a press booth with Vince McMahon, and then you know they, they were making sort of a formal introduction that Mike Tyson had joined the WWF and he was going to be a part of WrestleMania. When Stone Cold Steve Austin came down to confront him, and of course that started a big brawl where basically uh, Vince was, "You ruined it, Austin. You ruined it." And because of that, you know, Vince would go on. They never really explain the fact of why uh, Mike Tyson turned on DX and why he would be a part of the, the pre-workouts wearing the DX shirt. And then all of a sudden, come WrestleMania, he's wearing a Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt under the DX shirt. It, I think you're just you're supposed to forget that that thing went on. And it's supposed to be for sort of a picture in that moment of, um, you know, Shawn Michaels getting knocked out by Tyson uh, once the deal is all over. Basically because Bret Hart, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man... All of those guys were now living in um, WCW. They didn't really have a, a big number one contender with Shawn Michaels leaving, you know, with the uh, six-year absence because of his back problems. So that basically set up the fact of uh, Vince McMahon being the hand-picked opponent uh, for Stone Cold Steve Austin that led to the, the pushing and shoving where Vince finally cracked and uh, he got all hyped up and we were going to have a big Monday Night Raw match where they were going to have Vince uh, versus Stone Cold Steve Austin with one hand tied behind his back. Once the bell rings and we're about to get down to action, Dude Love, a.k.a. one of Mick Foley's personalities, comes out from the back and basically says that he's not going to let this fight happen. He's uh, going to veto this. Basically, he joins the corporation. He puts the mandible claw on Steve, which would set up the um the match of Dude Love versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. I believe they had two matches along the way, and which was just etching them, you know, etching them towards getting there. From there, they they honestly just sort of skip all the way into the Royal Rumble next year, uh, where basically you know it boils over. Where we're finally going to get Vince uh, versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, but it's protected inside of the Royal Rumble match, where basically Stone Cold versus Steve Austin was screwed. Where basically Vince told them he was going to be number one. I can't remember who was the one who screwed Vince and told Vince that he was going to have number two, but basically for at least um, two minutes, we were going to see these guys fight inside the Royal Rumble. Of course, um, Vince it get 
gets rolled out under the, the bottom rope because he is tired to get him his ass kicked at the Royal Rumble. He has the master plan of going, you know, through the crowd into the, uh, the woman's bathroom, I believe it was what it was, where he was met by the corporation and the corporation dumped, uh, you know, jumped Stone Cold Steve Austin and beat him down into the back only for uh, everybody to return uh, back down to the ring for uh, Vince McMahon to be the surprise victor of the Royal Rumble once The Rock came down and distracted Stone Cold Steve Austin. The next night on Monday Night Raw, Vince McMahon would say that he didn't want to fight The Rock at um, WrestleMania. So basically, it is Shawn Michaels, the commissioner, uh, slid into the side from uh, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin and said the new number one contender was going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock at WrestleMania. But Stone Cold ended up putting that up against the line just to get his hands on Vince McMahon at St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which ended up being a steel cage match. One on one, the first time that we really get a full on match from Vince versus um, uh, Steve Austin. And this was an awesome match. I remember reliving this and thinking I got every dollar's worth on that pay-per-view where basically Austin whooped Vince's ass all over the outside of that cage. And then when we thought that the match was over and I was like, oh man, I, I'm so glad I ordered this show. Basically, Vince... Um, was getting carted off on a gurney. Stone Cold Steve Austin picked up the microphone and basically said the match hasn't started yet. Get that guy off of there and get him in the ring so we can ring the bell. And I'm like, this is like getting two matches for one. And of course, the master plan is revealed. Of, you know, Vince McMahon had brought in, they were calling Paul White, a.k.a. the guy we call Big Show now, in from WCW. And he was sort of the corporation's surprise. He came up from underneath the ring and he threw Stone Cold Steve Austin into the side of the cage, which broke the cage open. And as it was swinging down. Austin fell off to the floor. He was surprised because he knew he was getting his ass kicked. He still won the match. He almost pulled it off like a heel would. Like basically, like, oh, I won? Well, yeah, yeah, I won. Uh, but basically, he wanted to get his hands on Paul White and the big show as well as, you know, show um, Vince McMahon that he was the boss. And from there, we skip all the way into 1999 around the Survivor Series time where basically Mick Foley's talking about Steve Austin and about how uh, his uh, his neck problems got worse, and they had to basically go in and get his neck fusioned, and they basically treated like that was the end of Stone Cold Steve Austin's career. Um, you know, as you can see, there's a lot of holes in this in this sort of one hour series, but then again, it's only one hour. I much would have loved it if they would have released these as DVD sets uh, that would have came out, maybe make this documentary an hour and a half, maybe even two hours, filled up with some of the Austin versus McMahon matches. I think that everybody in the world would have loved to have this. Uh, everybody knows that it's hard to find DVD. For from the Attitude Collection, which was basically Austin versus McMahon. The DVD sells for over $100 the last time I checked. Um, it, it's out there, but um, I don't know. This could have been better. Uh, you know, you definitely could have put some of those Austin versus McMahon rivalries on there. Uh, made a three-disc DVD, maybe a two-disc, um, two-disc Blu-ray, and um, I think a lot of people would have went out to the store and bought this. I, I, I think, as of right now, when I'm sitting down and thinking about my DVD collection, uh, pay-per-view uh, DVDs are definitely crossed off the list. They're not putting anything on the bonus features, especially on the Blu-rays, where they could be stacking that with more Monday Night Raw footage of matches that we're not going to be able to have in our collection. Or maybe even like SummerSlam, they could have put one of those confidential things, and I probably would have bought it, not knowing how they, they added the DX confidential last week. Maybe they'll add the Hogan, and the, the Vince, and they already have the video game up there one as well. They easily could have put maybe the Stone Cold Steve Austin on one on there, and I would have bought that just to have that in my collection, but they didn't, so they're definitely off the list. The three-disc DVD sets, are basically, you know, like the Sting one that just came out of people's careers, I'll buy those, but I'm definitely going to buy them used on the used market where I'm not paying them the full market price for that. Um, paying 20 bucks, there's so much stuff on the network every time I turn it on, there's things that I want to watch that I don't even have time for. I, I felt like I really wanted to do some Halloween Havoc reviews before Halloween this year since it was October, and I didn't even really get a chance to do that. So that's just one proof that there's always something on there to watch every time I sit down. Plus, they're adding these things up there like the, w, um, the, the Monday Night Wars series. There's going to be more rivalries. Hopefully, they'll bring back WrestleMania Rewinds um, eh, sooner than later. So... There's always things like that, but and always something that has a documentary on it, something that I haven't seen that's sort of going to be exclusive to the Blu-ray or DVD set. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get that. That's a, that's a must-have. Uh, I think the next one that's going to be coming out is the Macho Man set that's coming out in a few weeks. Um, they also have the... Um, 
uh, Attitude Era Volume 2, which I think is just going to be matches with some sort of clip segments along the way. That one might not be a best have, but I ended up buying that on a deal that WWE DVD News found where it was only six ninety nine plus tax. So that's going to be a must have just to get in. Like, why would you not buy that for six ninety nine? You got to be kidding me. So that's about as cheap as it's going to get. But that's the rivalry set. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys down the road. Hey, what up, everybody? This is Stephen Breach coming to you. It got late, and it got late in a hurry. I uh, just got done watching my second uh, documentary of the night. My first one was the uh, the Rock Monday Night War special that uh, I just got done watching an hour ago, and then I just finished up watching Austin vs. McMahon Part 2 of the WWE Rivalry series. Very, very good special. Uh, much like when I was watching the 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 one last week, um, it just sort of goes hand in hand with what I just watched, basically. Basically, uh, the last one was on The Rock being a big part of the Monday Night War. Of course, one of the biggest rivalries of The Rock is Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're going to talk a lot about that. And we go right into watching this Austin versus McMahon, and it starts right off with WrestleMania 17 sort of playing a big part in the last documentary that I just watched. And I know when you watch documentaries, things are sort of going to go hand in hand with one another, but you don't really want to watch them back to back talking about the same things over and over again. Uh, I like the fact that, you know, they're stacking the deck right now with a whole bunch of, uh, you know, you have to get the network sort of uh, um, television series or you're going to fall behind. You know, they're making it where you have to jump on this thing. And this is one of the reasons why I love the WWE Network is, is you get these things. You know, I no longer have to go out. I know I picked up the Attitude Era Volume 2 Blu-ray today, but uh, I haven't been buying as many Blu-rays or DVDs as of late because the network is stacked so strong with so many things that are out there. Um, the, the, it starts off with the WrestleMania 17 thing, basically telling the story of, you know, uh, Rock is coming in to uh, the WrestleMania as the champion. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin is best desperate to get there. He really didn't think that his uh, his year that year was that strong, and he needed to, to prove to himself and, and prove to the, the other you know wrestlers that were in WWE that he was still one of the strong guys in the company and that he wanted to be the guy who picked up the ball and ran with it. And uh, that's why you know they set the story of Vince McMahon coming down to the ring. And, um, you know, helping Stone Cold and Steve Austin by giving him the chair. Uh, and to not just beat The Rock with it, but I mean just wail on The Rock. Just beating it. I, just, I, I honestly haven't seen WrestleMania 17 in a long time. I listened to the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast where he watched it and sort of told his inside stories. And he, um, you know, uh, did, did almost like his Jim Ross impression of watching the match. And, uh, you know, telling everything that was going down and what was going through his mind, you know, second by second as you're watching it. And uh, it was sort of supposed to be like if you paired him up at the same time, but I didn't do it. I was riding around in the car. One of the first times that I'd ever listened to wrestling while I was driving around. And it honestly was, it was pretty weird. Um, but, you know, Austin says it's it, it's... 100% his fault. He went to Vince. He pitched a storyline. He said that he was bored being a babyface and he thought it was time to turn heel. And it was one of the biggest mistakes of his life. And it sort of set him up in, into a spot where, um, you know, he, he wasn't, you know, hitting on all cylinders because it wasn't what it once was. He shakes Vince's hand and they share a beer and they walk out. And it starts a, a, a you know, a, a long series of segments basically of, uh, you know, Stone Cold Steve Boston being with. Um, uh, Vince McMahon as a partner and it's something that we'd never seen before and it was good thinking but it just didn't play out you know Stone Cold Steve Austin said he should have listened to the fans and just went along with what they were doing you know they weren't really booing him turning heel they just were booing him because it just wasn't what they wanted to see and it wasn't what they wanted to pay for um, you know after Wrestlemania 17 basically that week is when the sale of WCW went down where Vince McMahon bought his competition, which led to the Invasion storyline. And they sort of cover the reasons why a lot of people think they don't like the Invasion that much. There's no Ric Flair. There's no NWO. There's no Goldberg. There's no you know, you know Scott Steiner. There's no big names. It's Booker T, DDP, and a lot of the, the, um, you know, the mid-card uh, that was there. It was the B-team uh, players really coming over. Um, you know, Diamond Dallas Page came over, uh, Booker T came over, because basically they thought if they didn't come over, they were going to lose their spot, and, and they were never going to be able to get it back. And if, if you didn't go to WWF, basically WCW had closed down, ECW was gone, TNA wouldn't be around for, um, I don't think, another year. 
So, I mean, there was nowhere for these guys to go to make money. DDP, because of his age, you know, he had to jump on it just because if, if he got passed up, you know, um, he, he he probably never would have wrestled again, at least never really wrestled on a, on a, on a big stage. But um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, turns heel on Vince McMahon, uh, and, you know, he goes against them basically because he's, he's dying for, for his attention, and he thinks he's giving it another direction. So basically, he joins WCW, and... Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin says that this is one of the worst, you know, points of his life. Uh, basically, um, he doesn't remember a lot of the things that were going down. When people call in and ask him things about the uh, the invasion, um, he, he doesn't really have a good answer. He doesn't really remember what was going down. He has to ask, basically, people what was going on on that show that they're asking about, you know, who won, where were they, um, and sometimes it'll sort of spark something in him. If, if, if I was to call in, and it was, it's one of the things that I would, would want to talk, uh, to him about again, it was just basically if he remembered anything about the guys in the back sort of coming together, I know that there was a lot of friction because you were adding on double the roster and a lot of guys were coming in, and I know nobody used the stunner, as as a finisher, but I mean, like if you think about the Rock and Booker T, you've got the Rock bottom and you got the bookend. You know, lots of guys had the same finisher. Eddie Guerrero and Rob Van Dam both had uh, the frog splash off the top rope. And normally with wrestling, the finisher is protected. Only one guy is able to use it. Uh, sometimes they were able to use it in, um, you know, sort of. Um, feuds to see who had the better finisher, who was going to be able to hit their finisher and knock the other guy out. But um, was there any good backstage stories about what was going down at that point? About, you know, basically guys in the locker room having to sort of use their seniority or guys having to use, you know, basically who was the bigger star at the time in order to get there. Uh, from there, they sort of jumped to WrestleMania 18, uh, talking about, you know, basically the NWO coming in after the um, Invasion storyline is all done. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin has a match against Scott Hall. Scott Hall says it best, basically, when he says both of these guys had a lot of outside interferences going down at the time in their life. Um, you know, they were both going through hard times. The match is decent. The match should be a lot better, and there's no real excuses for what went down. You know, people either love this match or they hate it. I think everybody can think about Scott Hall selling the stunner um, when it all goes down. Stone Cold said that after WrestleMania, basically, he took a few weeks off, and then he went on the Bite This internet um, sort of talk show hosted by Kevin Kelly and The Fink, and he just went off on basically everything that was involved in WF. He didn't like the writing. He didn't like the creative. Um, he didn't like what was going down with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he felt like he was wasting his time. Uh, within a few weeks from there would be a, a show um, in Atlanta and Monday Night Raw. One of the things that a lot of people think about when they think about Stone Cold Steve Austin was him walking out on the WWF, and I just honestly couldn't believe it. Uh, basically, I know that everything you know reacted real fast, and and Vince McMahon almost went into mode of um, you know Bret Hart uh, screw job sort of uh, PR mode. Um, you know Vince McMahon appeared on the Bite This um, a talk show that week talking about what went down, and um, you know basically throwing Stone Cold Steve Austin under the bus. Uh, from there, you know, they would have The Rock come out the next Monday when he was supposed to be there. Um, you know, Ric Flair ripped Stone Cold Steve Austin in the opening promo of the uh, Monday Night Raw that he was supposed to be at. Basically, it was just all hands on deck to just basically, you know, throw so Steve under the bus as being a bad guy. It was almost sort of breaking off all ties with them and making sure that they never wanted to come back. I know that, you know, Stephanie McMahon has mentioned CM Punk a few times and they when she hears the CM Punk chants and she's been able to to kill them off at best. But I don't think the I don't think Triple H or Stephanie McMahon or, or anybody has said anything publicly on television in order to sort of uh, emphasize the CM Punk that they don't want him to come back. I think that if Punk called, I think they would have to sort of have a sit down like Vince and Austin did where they basically got in a room together because of Jim Ross and they were able to work things out where he was able to make his return. Of course, from there, he would go into the huge storyline of him being sort of like a GM uh, with uh, Monday Night Raw, with the, the Eric Bischoff uh, ordeal. I don't really remember the, the ending 
of his wrestling career. I know he, he wrestled his last match at WrestleMania 19 against The Rock, a match that he lost. I remember more than anything the documentary called The Mania of Mania, um, which is the, the WrestleMania 19, the movie. And um, with that, you know, basically Austin has a stroke the night before almost. He has to go to the hospital, pump full of those uh, IVs. I just started to get him ready. He says that basically nobody told him not to wrestle, uh, but it probably wasn't the smartest idea in his world. But, you know, he wasn't going to miss what was supposed to be his last match. And um, from there, they talk about his, you know, going into the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania 25. Uh, you know, Vince McMahon's only put one person into the Hall of Fame giving their speech. And it just shows how big the rivalry was between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon to, to see how, you know, basically... Vince would give him uh, a speech in order to put him on the Hall of Fame, and uh, Austin gets that big moment. And I know that Austin doesn't come around all that often. Um, much like you know, I knocked the Rock uh, in 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 the, the review I did of the Monday Night War thing. Um, we got to see you know Austin at at WrestleMania. Uh, 25. He came back at 27. He was special guest referee, and we didn't see him again all the way until. Uh, WrestleMania 30, I believe, you know, three year hiatus, you know, for a guy that was the biggest star on earth. Some people say that he doesn't want to come back and tarnish his image doing something stupid that doesn't make any sense. Some people say he doesn't want to come back unless he's going to get paid. Um, well, I did, I guess we did see him at, uh, when was that? It was WrestleMania 20. Oh, 20, he was a special guest referee. So that was a long time before he got put into the Hall of Fame. 21, he did the, uh, Piper's Pit with uh, with um, uh, Carlito. So, you know, he did some things after his retirement, but nothing was really that big. He went in and started making movies and TV shows and all that. So you know he was able to move on. He's got the podcast now that's been going on for at least about a year now. I'm pretty sure, and um, he does good. The the rivalries thing I think is it, it's going down. Honestly, as I was watching the intro to the show this week, I, I noticed they showed like. Uh, Macho Man and Hulk Hogan, and I'm like, well, that rivalry was pretty much already all talked to death. During the WrestleMania recall, um, they had um, a few other faces that were on there, so uh, I'm going to have to see where they go with this show. I'm hoping that you know that they're not showing these documentaries back-to-back. -back. Um, I watched two of them, it, and um, it was longer than I thought it was going to be. I'll say that, so I, I didn't think I'd be up at 1.30. Uh, to make my review of the show, but uh, it is what it is, and uh, tomorrow's a new day, so I'll see you guys on down the road.